Thank you. Uh, I don't know how to, uh, how to get the slides. OK, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And uh, I'm presenting today about dynamic forms and widgets, uh, so basically how to handle attribute data editing in QEs. Uh, as you can see on that uh, intro slide, uh, you can have uh, nested forms in QGIS with relations, and, uh, and I'm going to present you how to deal with uh, default values and updates, like similar to triggers in databases, but happening on the client. And then uh, constraints, depending on other widget values. Uh, data defined widget visibility of certain groups in the form. Uh, then more sophisticated overlay functions, uh, basically when you want to overlay with another spatial layer and get attribute data from that other layer. Uh, and this is a bit uh, a special case in that use case I'm going to present. Uh, we are also, uh, we need an interface for an external reporting application. And uh, for that, we need to send uh, partial maps like Atlas sheets to that external re report system. And the example, the use case I'm going to show is uh, called MJPNL. It's a German abbreviation, but it's basically uh, about a management of a biodiversity program. Uh, so in order to, to uh, to support uh, biodiversity in, in nature and landscape. It's about uh, subsidies uh, we pay for farmers if they manage the land in a certain way they agreed on. So the application handles the geodata, the agreements and contracts, and uh, there's a payment interface for uh, like export of a CSV file that they can send to SAP for the uh, payments of the subsidies. Here can you also see the, uh, so from a cart cartographic or GIS point, point of view, it's not so, so uh, sophisticated. It's uh, basically point, uh, polygons with the areas. There are some points, lines for hedges and trees and things like that. Uh, so it's more interesting for, from the form's point of view. So in the system, we handle uh, meadows, pastures, farmland, habitats, fallow land, Brache uh, in German, uh, outskirts of forests, and some orchards if they meet a certain criteria. And they, they pay out around three and a half million Swiss francs a year. Uh, but of course distributed to many farmers. The main functionalities is the form handling, widget handling, the editing of the geodata. We also can attach photos, uh, uh, sightings of fauna and flora, in the, that's important for the biodiversity. Uh, and, and then there's this interface to the external report system uh, for generating the contracts and agreements. Uh, this is based on Microsoft Office. And of course, there's the payment process and uh, some data quality checks, but that's something that's still work in progress. It's not yet done. As you know, the, you may know the layer properties, and I, apolo I uh, apologize to the many QGIS experts in this room who already know this. <laughs> But uh, I hope there will be something new for, for you as well. <laughs> so this is the screenshot of the layer properties, the attribute form section. Uh, so first you have to decide on the top here, there's a combo box, uh, there's an auto-generate form, there's a drag and drop designer, and there's a, a third option where you can create uh, the form in Qt designer and then attach it. But that's quite complicated. You need to have almost programming skills for that. And for our purpose, the drag and drop designer is the best tool uh, to, to work with, because the other is too simple, and that one offers a lot of options. So here you can see three columns. 
On the left, you see all the fields of the layer. If you would scroll down, I can't show it in live now, but there would be actions and HTML widget and, and a, a graphic chart uh, widget as well. And in the middle column, you can actually see the sections of the form. It's not a, it's not a VCVIC. You, it's kind of uh, designing it a bit in the dark <laughs> because you cannot see immediately the results, but uh, uh, it works anyway. And here you can have groups, and a group could be a tab, or like a, a tab in a form, or it could be a, a group box that groups um, multiple widgets together. And you can drag and drop the attribute fields to the groups and de define the order. They don't need to stay in the same order they are in the table. And uh, you can also add a, a field multiple times if you want, or skip a field you don't need. And on the right column, there's the configuration of the individual widgets and fields, and also the constraints and default values. There are some useful functions and variables in the form context, and uh, there, there's a little warning. Uh, some of them only appear if you are in the drag and drop design, uh, in, in that form editing mode. Uh, they don't appear at other places in the expression editor because uh, there's a scope, and the scope could be the map, or could be a layout, or in, in that case, it's a form. And the uh, interesting value here, uh, variable, sorry, function, it's a function here, it's the current value, and the parameter would be the field name of the table you're dealing with, and that gives you the unsaved value before it is committed to the database. So you could, uh, another widget could depend on the unsaved value of an existing widget. Or for, it could, for example, it could be used in a constraint of another uh, attribute field. And then there's a variable called form mode. And as you know, there, might, there are different form modes in QGIS. The add feature mode, that's uh, after you uh, create a new geometry or a new entry, you get a single window just for that feature, and that's the add feature mode. And there's the single edit mode. If you click with the identify tool and there's just one result, that's the single edit mode. And there's multi-edit mode, search mode, and uh, aggregate identify mode. And the two other ones you might already know from Atlas, uh, serial printing, current feature, current geometry, that also gives you the of the object you're editing, the all the attribute and geometry uh, data. So this is how it appears in the expression editor dialog. You see in the red square highlighted uh, the, the four uh, functions and variables. Default values. Uh, you can define a default value based on an expression if you click on that. So that's in the third column on the right of the editor. Uh, and here you can have an expression, and that applies whenever the object is, uh, or the feature is newly created. But if you check this apply default value on update uh, checkbox, it means it all also applies if you edit something in the feature could be geometry or attribute. So this is kind of like an update trigger in the database. But of course, this happens before the data is committed to, uh, to the data source, like Postgres. And in my experience, uh, if you have multiple dependencies, like one widget dependent on the other, dependent on the other, that's something you cannot really rely on if you have to do the formulas uh, multiple times uh, because the order of execution is not guaranteed here. Um, constraints. Uh, constraints is basically an expression that uh, always returns true or false if the constraint is met or is uh, not passed. Uh, and you can have an ex uh, description to show uh, like an error message if the constraint is, uh, is not passed. And uh, 
that constraint can be uh, data defined with an expression, but the error message not yet. <laughs> I think it's kind of a limitation because if you have a flexible constraint, you need also flexible error messages. So that could be added later, I think, hopefully. So here's an example. Uh, there is a subsidy, the amount of a subsidy, it depends on the category of a meadow. And you have lower and upper bounds, and uh, depending what category you select in the combo box of the meadow type, there are different uh, uh, constraints for the subsidies. Remember, it should always uh, return true or false, that expression. So the next thing I would like to show is uh, if you have a group like a tab or a, uh, a group box, you can control the visibility by an expression. Of course, that also requires the return of true-false, like a Boolean value. If it's met uh, with true, then it's shown the group or the tab. If it's not met, uh, then it's uh, hidden. You cannot do this for single widgets, but only for groups, groups and tabs. Okay, uh, now I would like to discuss, this is a feature, you might know it as a spatial join. So it means, uh, for example, if you have a polygon and you want to get the attribute data of another layer uh, with an overlay intersection. And here, this has been in QGIS for a while, but it had quite some limitations because uh, if you maybe touch another polygon or only have a very small, tiny intersection, it would give you the result, but normally you wouldn't want that because it doesn't matter to you, it's too small, the overlap. And that was improved uh, recently, I think it's in 326 that you can have a min overlap uh, parameter. If, if it's met, then it's uh, taken into account. If it's not met, it's skipped. And uh, there's also a min inscribed circle radius because if you have like a very long, uh, narrow uh, intersection, like an edge of a polygon, uh, you have a quite a large size, but, uh, but it's really thin, narrow, and for that, we have this mean inscribed circle radius. Uh, it means you have to fit a circle with a certain radius in that polygon at the widest area. Only if that's the case, like say five meter circle would fit in there, then it would be taken into account. And there's also the possibility to sort by intersection size. So the result would first show the, uh, the largest intersection and then uh, ordered by intersection size to the uh, lowest one. Or you could limit it to uh, only one feature or to two or five or whatever you want. And uh, the last one is the return details. It gives you back in an array uh, the feature ID, the expression result, the overlay area, and the, and the circle radius of the intersection, if you want to do anything with that. Here, this uh, is an example in the red box that's all da data filled in automatically with this overlay function. So for example, you have geographic names that overlap with that polygon, or you have a municipality. It could be that the area spans more than one municipality on, at the border. Uh, you also have the, uh, the parcel numbers and things like that filled in automatically. And it also updates if you edit the geometry. So if you change it to make it smaller, then it would recalculate the intersections. This is uh, the, an illustration how the inscribed circle would work in a polygon. Yeah. And of course you could, there's a get feature function which allows you to get attribute data from another layer, and with that you could traverse relations and get uh, information from tables that are not spatial, for example, you could do that. 
Another uh, addition we did uh, together with Alessandro Pasotti was uh, you, if you have actions uh, you, and you can assign them now to buttons and you can place the button in a form. An action could be a Python script or could be opening a document or a web service or something. And we use that in order for as, as the interface to uh, uh, send the data to the reporting system. So here you can see in that form that large button at the bottom, it's actually an action behind it. And in order to send the data to the form, uh, because we have, like, some tables are quite complex with, I don't know, between 50 and 100 attributes. And uh, we also want to send map extents to the, uh, to the, uh, service to the web service. Uh, they, we have another small plugin, it's called Atlas Export, and that takes an Atlas image, encodes it as a binary 64 string, and sends it to the web service it's, uh, for that particular feature. So that was improved. It's like a post request, uh, the submit URL, and with represent attributes, you can send a, a map data structure of all the uh, attribute data you have on that layer or related layers. And with URL in code, you make sure you're not sending invalid characters. This is the small Atlas export function uh, plugin. Uh, and here you can define the layout name, uh, the DPI and the image format, and it takes from that Atlas feature the full layout. It could be a layout or it could be just a map extent sent to that web service. Uh, yes, uh, I will distribute the slides, but this is an example how we send uh, like data from multiple tables to that web service. With, uh, so here the map is not a, a, a map uh, like in a geographic sense, but as a data structure of the attributes. This is how the report would look like. So you have uh, map sections delivered from QGIS to Microsoft Office and uh, all the attribute data and you can style it in, in, in Word or Excel or whatever. And that's my last slide. Um, there are some planned improvements for the upcoming versions. We will implement the spacer widget because as you may know, if you have a multi-column layout, uh, maybe two or three columns, they are ordered like the first one ends up in the left column, the second in the right, uh, and so on. But often, you, or sometimes you want to show particular widgets next to each other, but you need to skip a column like an empty cell for that one. It's not possible yet. You could have a hidden widget, but that has other uh, implications. Uh, but the spacer widget would allow an empty cell in the form layout. <coughs> and the HTML widget will be improved so that it can display dynamically expressions in, in an HTML field without having to create a virtual field. If you want to display some expression result uh, in, a, in a text area or HTML, you can do that without creating a virtual field on, that also shows up in the table. Yeah. And the last point, I'm not sure if it's possible. Sometimes I would wish more control of, over the recent heights of the widgets, but it's done by Qt in a way you cannot fully control, and I'm not sure if we are able to do that. <laughs> okay, that's the end. <laughs>